Okay, why nuclear power is too expensive and always late. I've talked about oil. I've talked about natural gas. I've talked a lot about you know, geopolitics and done quite a few of these sort of educational videos. Today, we're going to talk about nuclear power. I've been getting asked about nuclear power since the beginning of time. And listen, I'm, I just want to say right up front, this is not an anti-nuclear power video. I think nuclear power is great. This is just a factual video about nuclear power and the problems that it has. And those problems are many. You see, nuclear power is often sold as the perfect solution to everything. You know, no carbon, always on, reliable, great baseload, foundational power, all things that are true. So the question is, if it's so great, if it is so great, why can't we build it? Why can't we build it cheaply? Why does it always take 20 years to build a nuclear reactor? So today we're going to break down why nuclear energy is unaffordable, even though they claim it's one of the cheapest forms of energy. It's absolutely not even in the universe of that. That's not a thing. Why does it take so long to build? And why those problems actually aren't accidents, they're structural problems in the United States. And the biggest problem with nuclear is that it fails the timeline. That, that's the most obvious problem is time. A modern nuclear plant, you're looking at 10 to 20 years from planning to operation and sometimes longer. That includes, you know, from site approval to licensing to the lawsuits, the many lawsuits, the redesigns, the financing delays the construction, and we have an energy system that changes, literally changes every 10 years. Nuclear shows up after the problem has already changed. Whatever problem we had when we started this nuclear project is a totally different problem when we finished it. You don't build nuclear to solve today's energy needs. And today, our energy needs need to be addressed today, not in 20 years from now. So you build it hoping the world looks the same two decades later. And that's like a horrible bet. That's like the, the world has never looked the same two decades later. The number two problem with nuclear energy are capital costs, which are insane. Nuclear isn't expensive because, you know, the nuclear fuel is expensive. It's expensive because the construction costs are enormous. The financing costs just explode over time. Every delay compounds the interest on the financing. A modern nuclear plant, we're going to run you 10 to 12, 15 billion dollars. Far more, always a lot more than any initial estimates. They need to just put a 30 or 40 percent contingency on any nuclear project estimate. And every year of delay adds billions of dollars in financing cost. You know, uh, a couple of lawsuits. That, that hold up the project for a year can cost the company a billion dollars or $2 billion. And all of those costs are absorbed by the consumers. That results in higher electricity prices. The Vogel plant in Georgia is the perfect example. Went way over budget, took way too many years to build. And the people in Georgia are going to be paying very high utility bills for that nuclear reactor or that nuclear plant for like the next 60 years. And they were sold that. They were sold that on the idea that it was going to deliver cheap and affordable, clean energy. And they're stuck with a 60 year multi, I can't remember how many billions. I think it was 15 billion for one of the reactors. There's more than one. 
I didn't look it up. The costs were outrageous. And, and that's why no nuclear plant gets built without government backing. If nuclear were truly affordable, private capital, private equity, the folks with money, they would be lining up to write checks. But they're not. And the fact that you don't have people lining up to write checks should tell you everything you need to know. And, you know, nuclear advocates, they love to blame regulation. But the truth is, nuclear is heavily regulated because the failures are catastrophic and generational. A mistake, a failure that leads to a cleanup, you're talking a cleanup that lasts for generations. This isn't something you can fix in six months or a year. This is generations. So the political, you know, sort of appetite or tolerance for the risk is, is not very good. But the Trump administration doesn't seem to care at all about any of that. But the fact of the matter is you cannot deregulate nuclear hardly at all without enormous public backlash. Uh, <laughs> that, that costs people seats in, in the government and lots of lawsuits and legal chaos. Every design change in a nuclear plant requires new approval. Every safety upgrade adds cost. Every local objection causes delays. It's not bureaucracy gone wild. It's society saying, we don't feel safe. The risk must be minimized. That's what it is. And minimizing that risk costs money, and it costs time. And the dirty little secret about nuclear, which is not really a secret, but people don't think about it, it's never achieved mass production. We've had this form of energy forever, and it has never achieved mass production. Every plant is custom-built. Everything is site-specific. Uh, all the legalities are with each plant are truly unique in and of themselves. When you compare that to gas plants and solar farms and, and, and wind turbines, those things can scale instantly. Nuclear can't. Without repetition and things like that, costs don't come down. Without cost declines, investments go away. You can't bring down the cost of something that you can't scale. It's not a thing. And so this is why nuclear prices always rise while everything else gets cheaper. Everything else gets cheaper while nuclear rises. A lot of people want to talk about SMRs. There's a lot of excitement. Small modular reactors. And they're being largely marketed as the fix for everything. So far, they still face licensing delays. They still require nuclear-grade construction. And they still depend on government subsidies, which everything else does, so why not? SMRs may reduce some of the risk, but they don't fix the timelines. And they don't fix the financing. And they don't provide the amount of power that we need in this country. It looks great on paper, totally unproven in reality. And energy systems don't run on promises. That's not a thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, SMRs. We'll see. Maybe they'll come through. I'm not as uh, bullish and excited about SMRs as a lot of other people are. But we'll see what happens. Uh, opportunity cost kills nuclear. Every dollar spent on nuclear is a dollar not spent on grid upgrades, which we need more than anything, not spent on storage, transmission, efficiency, all of the things that would help all of us 
much more than some little nuclear plant, which, by the way, doesn't really put out that much electricity when you talk about the needs that we need, when you talk about uh, the demand. A gigawatt sounds like a lot, and it is a lot, but it's not a lot when it takes you 20 years to achieve it. We were on track to add nearly 100 gigawatts of renewable power this year before Donald Trump took office and started canceling projects. 100 gigawatts in one year. 20 years to build a one gigawatt nuclear reactor. I mean, that should be all I have to say, honestly. And the math, you know, <laughs> with the money you, you spend on nuclear, you can build a ton of gas plants. You can build massive renewable capacity. You can, you can put a huge dent in, in scaling up our grid upgrades that we desperately need. And the time it takes to build one nuclear reactor, we can do all those things. And energy systems especially in today's world with data centers, AI, how fast everything is happening right now. Energy systems care about speed as much as anything else. Speed is a huge driver. And that's why there's so much money poured into renewable energy. Everyone wants, everyone wants to say, you know, it's the subsidies, it's the subsidies. Everything has subsidies. It's the speed. The speed at which those investors start seeing some returns on their investments. And nuclear totally fails that test. So, you know, at the end of the day, nuclear isn't bad. It's just slow and it's late. You know, it, it's not evil, it's not useless, and it's really not unsafe, in my opinion, but it is very slow, it is very capital intensive, it is a political nightmare, and it's economically risky. In a country that needs energy now, today, nuclear doesn't cut it. It shows up too late and it's too expensive. And that's why even today, currently, the nuclear we have survives on subsidies, not markets. And a lot of nuclear projects have failed. I feel like nuclear is always going to be one of those things people just argue about and not a solution that actually ever comes to fruition. That's what it's always been. I just feel like that's what it's always going to be. Whatever progress is made under this administration is likely to be lost under the next. And with nuclear, if you don't get progress and forward motion happening and sustain that, you're done. If, if a Democrat or someone who is not a big fan of nuclear energy comes into office after the Trump administration, that'll set nuclear energy back another 20 years. And that's what happens in this country. So that's it on nuclear. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Please, please like and share. Thank you guys so much to all my followers and subscribers. Hope you guys have a great week. Thanks.